Hey, hey, everybody, it's time for Old Roommates. Today on the show, we revisit 1984's Gremlins. So, run away from Mrs. Deagle, have a seat, and make sure you're not eating anything after midnight. It's time for the show. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to Old Roommates, the only podcast that revisits pop culture through a middle-aged lens. This is Christina. And this is Brian. And we are revisiting Gremlins. We are. Oh, Gremlins. Do you remember this movie? I mean, honestly, Brian, do you, do you remember the, the, the controversy that was surrounding this movie? Quite a bit, Christina. There's because more. You were young, well, I mean younger. Twelve. There's more. Well, we should begin as then, but we are talking about then. We are talking about but, then. So there's two bits, really two bits of big controversy. Because remember, like a little bit of trivia for the you know PG thirteen mm -hmm. came out two months after Gremlins. Yes. Now PG thirteen was sort of inspired by Temple of Doom. Right? And... See, I thought it was Gremlins that was inspiring. It, it inspired So Temple it. of Doom was sort of got the conversation going. And then Gremlins was like, all right, something has to happen. Yes. And people said it was because of, and we're going to get to all of this, everyone, the microwave. Yeah. And I did some deeper dives because as it was all unfolding in the rewatch for yeah, me before my sure. eyes, I spent a lot of time researching this. And the big argument is pretty interesting when you really do, I mean, shallow dives only, but for this little conversation, I did some deep diving sure. because the concern was, this is the eighties for you, that kids would start putting their pets in the microwave and seeing mm -hmm. to see what happens. And by, but still, PG is parental guidance. Right. And, you know, I, I mean, that would imply the kids are pretty sick. And we know that they are. But, um. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> but that was a big concern. The other part, and I, so we're going to get to the part that, because I, I read two things, was, hello, Phoebe Cates' character flat out says in a PG movie, mm -hmm. there, that's when I knew there is no Santa Claus. Yes. So on a PG, on a PG movie. movie, what a way to so find out. So essentially under the age 13, if we are saying yeah, right. PG 13 is 13 and older, right? Yeah. So essentially, you know, an eight year old yeah. or a six year old. Yeah. So Gremlins got it, got the ball rolling faster. For yeah. The PG and that was movie. my, that was my memory of it was that Gremlins, there was such an outrage over this movie that this was the movie that said, okay, let's get a PG-13 rating. So I didn't remember, I didn't remember about the Temple of Doom. Yeah, part, yeah. But that was my memory for sure. And I would agree with him. I, I mean, I would agree that this, and we've talked about this before with ratings, mm -hmm. with like Jaws, Jaws yeah. Willy Wonka, yeah. for example, is one that was a G, yeah. which probably should have been more of well, a G. They, again, chop a chicken's head off. Right, I yeah. mean, it, the rating system is flawed. Mm -hmm. Especially back in the eighties, yeah. especially. But yeah, I I just remember this being being billed almost as like a cute movie. I I don't remember it being billed as a horror movie because it wasn't right. It wasn't. If they you look at so it now, it'll say it's a horror slash comedy. Comedy, right? The because back then. There were two ways, there were two sort of takes on the advertising of this movie. It was all mystery, mm -hmm. right? It was like you saw the little paws coming up from, yes. the, from, the, from the box. And you're like, oh, what is a gremlin? What is this? And then the other side was you see Gizmo on a movie poster and you think, what is this teddy, so cute, cute teddy bear creature? Um, parents were not prepared for the bad part of gremlins. And mm -hmm. even I think there's a trailer that's like, Three rules, three rules. But they never say what happens but if it's you very don't. Mysterious. You never it's all see mystery. the after effects, the uh, you know, the gremlin, not yeah. the mogwai, right? I guess right. it's a mogwai that turns into a gremlin, but this, yeah. basically. But you don't see a picture of the gremlin. Nope. Right? As a parent, like if I ever brought my child in, that would be a problem. It was a problem. Yeah. There were a lot of people that walked out on this movie back in 1984. This was released, if my if my research is right, in June 
June 8th. This is essentially a summer blockbuster. Um, it was, I'll quickly tell you, it was made for $11 million. Mm -hmm. Looks great. I think yeah, it looks great. Million. It made $213 million. So, I mean, this was a huge summer blockbuster, even though it takes place during Christmas. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, a lot of parents were furious. A lot of parents took their kids and left. I think that's probably the right decision. Yes. I, 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 we're going to get into it. But yeah. I so, want to know personally, though, personally. which if I get into the personal thing, like then, Christina, your first experience with this movie. I, so I saw it in the movies. I remember <laughs> seeing this in the movies. And again, mm. it was very mysterious. 84, I must have been about 16, so I could handle this sort of thing, yeah. right? Uh, it was a Steven Spielberg, lots of marketing, lots of mystery, excited to see it. Yeah. And I remember seeing it in... I was surprised about it, but I liked the movie. Yeah. I really liked the movie. I remember not loving the whole Phoebe Cates storyline. Not necessarily like the girlfriend, boyfriend thing, mm -hmm. but the whole, like, the, the tragedy that is unveiled in the middle about her dad dying and getting stuck in the tribute. Like, so gruesome. When Also, there's... I don't want to interrupt you. No, it's okay. Because we'll get into now later, I guess. But, like, we'll now... La we <laughs> we'll get into now later. Go later but the now thing later. is... Yeah, I'm going back to then. I didn't be like, yeah, this is a shift. I remember being a little kid being like, what is this right now? Yeah, well, and I'm why are we having this conversation? It wasn't necessary. Yes, you're running for your life. And even then, I thought... This is weird, and it's so dark and tragic, mm -hmm. and just felt so out of place. Because I, being 12, I, of course, I was uh, old enough to remember the, the controversy, yes. we're calling it that, like, and thinking, wow, this movie is not at all affected by this moment of this movie. It feels completely unnecessary then. Yes. Yeah, but continue. But I did Sorry. I did enjoy the movie. I remember liking the movie yeah. and maybe because I, I just because it wasn't I didn't really have a preconceived notion as to what it was. Yeah. I kind of felt like maybe I felt like Steven Spielberg it was you know, Steven Spielberg movie. I don't think I thought it was gonna be just this really cutesy little movie because I don't think I would have seen it if I had thought that. Mm -hmm. So I was I liked it. I enjoyed it. But then again, like the, the Phoebe Cates story jarred me. Mm -hmm. um, and I was surprised at the violence. I do remember feeling like, whoa, that was a lot. Mm -hmm. Like leaving. But still enjoyed it. Yeah. What about you, Brian? And I'm curious about this because I remember, okay, talking about the gremlins. Yeah. I remember you being a little bit on the fence about it and you were like, that movie terrified me. Yeah. And so I, you never wanted to. No, I didn't want to talk about it until we 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 actually did. So, it. so this yes, is. I'm very we should about say this. right off the bat, which we didn't, is this is by request. We've had so many requests. Yes. So many requests from all over, perhaps the world, mm -hmm. for Gremlins. And it, and it feels like a Christmas movie. It does feel like a Christmas movie, even though it was right? released in which June. Which is why we yeah. waited until this time of year yes. to do this. So here is Gremlins. Thank you all for listening, and we hope you like this episode. So my then was, um, wow, was I not here for the violence? Because I was a, I was 12, but I'm not, you know, I'm yes. more like the drama. I can appreciate a good comedy at being 12, but... A horror movie, that was more my sister's stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, my sister loved horror movies, and she was younger than me. And, um, but I just remember feeling like, wow, why? Why? This is such a cute, funny, playful movie. Mm -hmm. And then the violence and the horror and the terror, and, like, I couldn't relax. It, like, it's such a false sense of security with Gizmo. And although I will say, I remember being 12 and really being like, Oh my God, Billy's the worst pet owner ever. <laughs> like, and, and, uh, but I so saw that to say, I, at the same time, um, on rewatch, I was like, I remembered every, almost, almost, I'll say, I remembered almost every single scene. Isn't so I must funny. have seen it more than once. I probably saw it a bunch of times. Yeah, maybe. And, um, but I liked it. I think like, but in the movie theater, the first time seeing it at 12, at 12, um, yeah, I was not here for the violence. And you weren't expecting it? No! Yeah, you weren't expecting the violence. Nobody was expecting the violence. It's a fun gizmo. And no one knew you probably were one of the first in line. <laughs> like, it wasn't like there was a lot of buzz on the street. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, uh, well, no, there was a little bit of, like, that, like, is Gremlins right for children? But I was 12, so it's always right. that gray area. But, so like, you were like, great. 
<laughs> yeah, let's see, let's see. And uh, but yeah, but I mean, uh, all the cr- all the criticisms criticisms are valid. Yes, that is it is gruesome at times. It is that story is completely unnecessary and does ruin probably ruined a lot of children's lives. Oh my god! Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so bizarre that they would even put it in. What there. I would probably say if I was a parent is. Well, no, honey. It's just because she doesn't believe in Santa anymore. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you would just splint. And I I don't remember thinking about the Santa Claus stuff back then. Like, I don't remember it that. I remember the story being gruesome and being like, oh, my God. Her father got stuck in a chimney and rotted. Um... No, he, well, he did get stuck, but first he broke broke his his neck. neck. He broke his neck. Neck. He broke his neck. And then, and then she got could smell stuck. his rotting flesh. Corpse. His his flesh. And then she's like, and we just thought it was a cat or a bird. I'm like, you just thought it was a cat? Gross. Like, I mean, that's right. still bad. Or she is it a cat or a squirrel or a bird? I don't know, something like that. Something, but yeah. but a cat would be pretty devastating. It's all, too. It's, I mean, <laughs> it was just so <laughs> weird that it was even put in this movie. Really? And where oh. it was put like, it, like if they did dead not have the that middle. conversation, like dead, dead in the who this movie? would yeah. notice if that was in that movie or not? Like, that's it was my no point. Crazy. But I thought that it, I felt that at twelve, Christina. Right. I was like, this is not necessary. And the whole thing is, oh, because she doesn't like Christmas. Okay, can't she just say her father left at let's, Christmas? Let's dive into now. Okay, because now through our let's, middle age lens. Down. Yeah. Here's my take. I have like several bullets about that. I wrote, why? Mm-hmm. Why now? Why did you feel the need to tell this stupid story right. when you're running for your lives? You're just sharing this now? And also, in that town, you don't think everyone already knew? Right. How does Billy how not does know this? How does he not know this story? Um, also, <laughs> do you remember how that plays out and what happens as soon as she's done with the story? Do they kiss for the first time? Oh, no, it just cuts. Oh, it just like, cuts. Just, and that's how I knew there was no Santa Claus. And they cut to Billy, played by Zach Galligan. And truly, it looks like he's ready to say, bummer, dude. <laughs> his his face is just so blank. Oh, he's, a t- first of all, God. not a great performance. I, I mean, we're no. jumping all around already. But but also, it's like, she's done with this. She's done with the story, and the scene just like ends like, oh, okay, nice. Thanks for that. Thanks for sharing that. There's nothing from Billy. There's nothing like, I am so sorry. There's no hug. A hug There's would nothing. have been something. And it's like, you know, or he could have said, like, we're going to, you know, Christmas is going to get better. Just believe in Christmas. Yeah. I mean, something. She shares this very disgusting story. Ugh. And that, and then he's just like, okay. And they cut to the next scene. That's what I mean. There's no point. Yeah. There's no, there's no point at all. There's no point at all. My whole note, my notes on that was the Christmas story, too much, so gruesome and sad. Not necessary. And I am really sorry, again, the townspeople... Would have already all known that. That Everybody town, everyone, this. Christina, everyone knows everyone in that yeah. town. At the bank, everyone knows everyone's last name. Mrs. Deagle would have said something for yeah. sure. Everyone knows everyone. Yes. It, it, it that that sense. would not, everyone knew, would have known that story by no then. No sense whatsoever. Really, really quick little bit of history going back to then. This was released the same day as Ghostbusters. Oh, wow. Two major, major, major classic 80s movies released in the same day, yeah. You would think it would have been October. One thing about the credits through my middle age lens. Oh, yeah. yeah, true. Well, it's all about the summer blockbuster. That's true. When everyone can, everyone's off of school so they can go see movies. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that really pissed me off as a middle aged lens is in the credits it says Gremlins created by. And it's like, no. Oh my God. No. Why are you ruining the magic? And to be honest, yeah. like, I kind of feel similarly with like. Even with Disney, sometimes with their when it's like voices by, I'm like no, yeah, like let us. I mean, of course, it's different with actors. I understand, yes, yes, yes. But you're uh, you're ruining that. Like the Gremlins are puppets. You're ruining right. that the Gremlins are creations if they're not real. I think when when you're young, that's a that's a buzzkill. Yeah, you know, I don't know for me personally. Although, how many young kids are going to be reading the credits? True, except for you. Yeah, it's true. Um. Christina, so, you know, immediate, immediate middle age lens, what's different? Um, so let's, let's think about, okay, some of the stuff that I forgot about, I forgot about all the crazy inventions that the father had. Yeah. That one, that made me laugh, to be honest. He had all these crazy inventions, and what made me laugh the most is the mother, like his wife, and the son, 
and like their reactions to these like they know that it's going to break yeah. they're trying to be supportive yeah. of their father and husband and the way in this st- that they're like nope we're still going to use it and knowing that these things are going to destroy the kitchen. destroy yeah. something or not work correctly yeah. um that made me laugh mm-hmm. that whole thing the father i thought the father was cute he, he was yeah. good I, I don't know he brought a little bit of a comedy element to this Mm -hmm. um i remember the dark alley i remembered all of that stuff and um i liked that it took a while to see gizmo yes what else what else can i say about this movie i think all so all in all i liked the movie yeah it wasn't as scary as i had remembered it to be Mm mm-hmm it was more, I think, well, like, the. it was a little bit more gruesome than I kind of remembered it to yeah. be. But I also felt like the whole time I'm watching this, I kept feeling like if you just made a tweak here and a tweak there, eliminated this part, eliminated this part, it would have been a much better, funnier movie. Yeah. So, and that was kind of annoying me. That it was really focused on the horror aspect of it when I think it should have been more focused on the comedy. Because when they're in the bar. Oh my God. And they're drinking and they're doing dancing and just when they're funny. Because really, let's think about this. The gremlin, right? Yeah. The idea of a gremlin is just these Causing mischief. Yes, this mischievous thing. Yeah. That's just, you know, causing your car not to start or whatever, right? They're not murderous creatures. Right. They're mischievous. Yeah. And I think that that would have been better if they focused more on the mischief and less murders. Like, they murdered people. The gremlins. The gremlins yeah. murdered people. Yeah. I wish they had not been so evil. Yeah. And it, it would have been a better movie for me. But I did like it. Yeah. What about you this time around? <laughs> what was your overall thought? Chris, I agree with what you're saying. I mean, I think this movie takes some turns that I'm like, wow, it just feels so unnecessary and so hyper violent. But my issue is, so I have a few notes, but there's a there's a big thing I have to talk about, mm-hmm. which has haunted me since my childhood, and it is one of the it is the scene that really put this in the back burner for me, like to have to watch it and because it. Well, I'll get to that, but uh, so. A few of my initial notes are, like, there's an amazing line that Polly Holiday says. Polly Holiday plays Mrs. Deagle. She was really good at I this. just wrote A+. Plus. I This is a great her. performance. And when she ever says to that, those poor people, she's like, you know, Mrs. Deagle, you know, we won't have a home. And she's like, well, now you know what to ask Santa for, don't you? I love that line. I have used, so I have used that line in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I did write, you mentioned the mom... Um, earlier, I wrote not the character, yeah. but the mo- the actress, and I'm not going to say her name because I, I know that you don't like when I get too deep into insulting <laughs> people's acting talent, but the mother, I think, is really bad. I yeah. think the performance is terrible. Um, she just doesn't feel like a real person to yeah, me, I agree. ever. I, I agree th- with She that. seems a little medicated, to be honest. She seemed a little like, sure, like she had something on her mind. Okay, fine. Uh, but they, I never felt that she was a mom. I never no. felt she was a wife. I 100% agree. It was a very two-dimensional It was character. weird. It's very flat. Very, very flat. flat. Um, and then, uh, which, since we're, on, since we're talking about the mom, I want to, I do want to talk about something. Um, this is the scene that haunts me, that has haunted me for decades. Mm-hmm. The kitchen scene. Yes. Here's why this bothers me. Okay. Up to this point in the movie, and not, okay, you know what? Less than that. When, before the kitchen scene happens, the phone rings. Yeah. And what um, Billy says to his mother is, Mom, get out of the house. Yeah. The gremlins are, you know, they've emerged and they're different from Gizmo. Just get out of the house. I believe that's all he says. Yes. So, right? Something they hatched. Like that they hatched. Yeah. Get out of the house. Get out of the house. It wasn't, yeah. It, there wasn't a lot of detail no. there. She, and then the phone line goes dead. Right? Mm -hmm. Cut the phone line. Sure. She hangs up the phone. She goes downstairs. And she hears 
them playing Christmas music on the record player. Yeah. Then she peeps into the kitchen and they're like eating food and stuff, eating the cookies. Her next step. <laughs> <laughs> fucking God at this movie. This scene has haunted me since I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. It is visuals I cannot get out of my mind. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. They have not touched her. They have not They don't even her. know she's... They don't even know she's yeah. there. Um, they, something is thrown a glass or something and she... The, it breaks. Now, again, what Billy said to her was, get out of the house. Yes. She doesn't. So she sees a gremlin eating batter out of a blender. She fucking turns the blender yes. on and murders the gremlin. That is a, such a disturbing okay. situation. Yes. Well, here's another thing. Now, as to your point, she doesn't know the gremlins are devious. No, they have no... No. What if they were just fucking hungry? Right. She doesn't know enough. They're playing Chris. They're playing. Do you hear what I hear? They're playing like like You're having slow a party. Christmas music. They're having a party in their kitchen. Party. She murders one. Do you, do we think perhaps that the mom is really the catalyst for making the gremlins angry? Ooh. Because Spike was there, or Strife yep. was Strife, Strife was there. So then it gets then it gets even better. I like that theory. She takes a cookie sheet to use as a shield because someone yep. threw a glass. Then. She takes the biggest kitchen knife in her kitchen and stabs a gremlin like 10 times oh in the chest God. on her kitchen counter. <laughs> I think she's a little psycho. Yes. She's a little too, you know what it is? She's a little too ready. She's a little too ready she for this She is moment. too ready for this. She is not yeah. Ellen Ripley from like the Alien movies. It's not like she's, and even she says, Get out of my kitchen. It's like, is it comedy or is it horror? Are you so afraid? So I think that line is supposed to be comedy. Yeah. Right? It's supposed to be, get out of my kitchen. But she's already made it like a bloodbath. She made it a bloodbath. Then. Oh my God. She was able to get one into the microwave, which is fine. He's trapped in the microwave. Right. He's stuck. He can't get out. She turns the microwave on Ugh. and he explodes. That was nasty. And they show him. They show it, which is so gratuitous. That, that explosion. Yeah. Like it made me sick to my stomach. That I, and I even, will never forget that explosion and I'll never forget the blender situation either. Yeah. It's so gratuitous. It's really awful. Um, and quite frankly, when they attacked her in the Christmas tree, I was like, do it, go, go but for the, it. it. Defend that point, yourself. It's, it's, it's self-defense. Self -defense. <laughs> <laughs> Killer. And I mean, she I started. She started it. She started, she started it. it. And so this is basically the only home they've ever known. This is their home. Oh my God, Christina, that's sad, isn't it? Who is this woman? Jesus. Calm down. Why she would she? Calm she, she, she needs to come. She, this is she overreacted. One hundred percent. They've just had just their day of their birth. <laughs> they come down, put on some Christmas music. <laughs> Want to make themselves a little snack? <laughs> and all of a sudden, like, this woman comes in yeah. and murders, murders their family members. Three of them. Three of them. Oh my god! They're like, oh my god, what's a cookie? <laughs> <laughs> she kills them. This is up there with the Santa Claus story. This was this is a redirection for this movie. The Gremlins, to your point, they're just screwing stuff up. They're breaking they're shit. They're making up. a mess. They're, being they're making gremlins. they're making messy. They're, eat, they're eating your food. Why? I mean, are you it's not any what? messier than if you had a house full of children. What are you gonna do? Stick those kids in the microwave? Hey, how about this, Christina? Is it even messier than the shit her husband cr invented? Oh my gosh, that orange juice. The orange maker? juice maker. Spraying oranges all over. You know how hard it is to get the gremlins kept it cleaner. The, the gremlins kept it cleaner than her husband's shitty inventions. Oh, I was so upset. And on rewatch, I will say it's not as um, traumatizing as I remember. Probably because I'm right. now almost fifty. But when I was, it 12, was, very, it was but it was very shocking. It's probably one of the first times you've ever seen something like that. That, that you know what it is. The worst of it was the microwave yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah. Now it's the stabbing. Mm. The look in her eye. Now, remember, she has never seen these creatures before. Yeah. And she it stabs one to death multiple, I mean, she, multiple times. I, she doesn't even know what they're capable of. Like, it's just so they're, Her only experience weird. is from Gizmo, who's a sweet... A, the sweetest little singing... Little, yeah. Howie Mandel It voice. is bizarre how she automatically just assumes they're yeah. murderous creatures. And I just wrote, why? Because they played your Christmas records, lady? Right. Why? Because they... Biggest... Right. Why? Because they ate your cookies? 
Like, what is wrong with her? Yeah. Get out of the house. That's yeah. all she had. She had one job. <laughs> just get out of the house. <laughs> Who cares if your kitchen is messy? Oh, my God. I just talked a lot. but um, No, I, I love that, though. That's what, really great, valid points. I mean, it's just those two scenes. It's like, this is not mm -hmm. what this movie is. Right. So it's figure a if they... total change. If they, um, if they just tweaked. This is what I'm talking about, the tweaking. If they tweaked that scene so it wasn't so violent. Yeah. And she just walked in and was surprised, and maybe they, like... Maybe they attacked her, or maybe they um, threw a bunch of stuff. Just at her. threw yeah. stuff at her, right? And then yeah. she's defending herself. Yeah. It'd be a little different. A little bit. If they removed the Christmas story, the you know the Santa story, and didn't have them killing anybody. Yeah. Right. There was somebody else that they was it the car. Somebody in the car made him crash into like. I feel like somebody else died. Well, so um, Mrs. Deagle obviously Mrs. died, Deagle, and yeah. then the two people, the um, the guy who was the Gremlins, Gremlins they ruin everything, foreign cars, blah blah, blah. and then they drive the um, fork, the plow, or whatever it is. The what do you call those things? The, the uh, uh, tractor. Tractor, yeah. yeah, the tractor right through the house. Yes, and a seemingly kills those two people. Right. So that's that part I would get rid of. And think about this. I, and I hated that Mrs. Deagle died because I love. She's a great character. She was character. such a good character. Yeah. But imagine if it was her fighting for her life. Yeah. And like in later in the movie, when she's defending herself. I'm gonna say yeah. She would have been way better at it. Like that would have made it more more believable because she already has like a little bit of that evil in her. More satisfying. Yes. Yeah, because you have the evil human villain against the evil monster villains. Right. And also, yeah, and I agree because what you have is. Mrs. Deagle, who is the town enemy, like no one likes her. Yes. And what's also unfortunate is that they she takes she has her wig off mm -hmm. in that scene, and she looks very vulnerable. Yeah. And that's a misfire that's too. That's a misfire for she sure. She should have been all glammed up in her very wealthy home, and just like you know, like laughing at the poor or something. Yeah, like and then and then the gremlins, right? And then the gremlins, you know, f around with her. And they, you know, send her chair off into, or she thinks she's beaten the gremlins, and then right. she sits and in the chair, and then the it. That would, yeah. oh my gosh, let's rewrite write this movie. <laughs> well, it's true. It's like it's just so it's just so unfortunate that they made her look so vulnerable. Yes. That's it, the way you just said it is so so much better. Like mm -hmm. to have her. To have her be that villain, the yeah. villain that we know. This is a different Mrs. Deagle right now. And then it's it would be a little bit easier, and to much. More satisfying and more entertaining. Yeah, I did. I will say one thing on my first page of notes. It's, yeah, um, that Polly Holiday character, Mrs. Steagle, yeah. she was so so good. She was walking down the street, and she there's this music in the background that was so much like the Wizard of Oz. Oh, movie, thousand percent. Right. I yeah. think it was. I think yeah. that was intentional. And then she's after the dog. Yes. And I just loved it. And she yeah. and then she goes and then and this is this would tie into it too because she even says she's talking about getting rid of getting the dog just like. The Wizard of Oz, yes, getting yeah. rid of the dog. But she said, maybe I'll put it in the spin dryer on high heat. Yeah. And then some, one of the customers says, that'll do it. Because <laughs> she's talking about <laughs> killing the dog. So anyway, but yeah. Which, just, through, when I was a kid, they used to, like, I was like, wow, she's really evil. As an adult, I'm like, she doesn't mean any of this. She's just miserable. No, she's yeah, just she being, like, she's like being trying to be mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will say Billy, uh, through my middle age lens, still sucks as a pet owner. Now, Billy, you have three rules. Mm -hmm. Don't get him wet. So naturally, he props Gizmo up on the sink. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with him? I know, but yeah. nothing happens. He it has be no clear. idea. Yeah, he nothing has happens. no idea how to handle these rules. Um, Billy, uh, don't feed him after midnight. Like he just gives him like a giant plate of chicken. Now, even but I would argue. I know it was twenty of, and they chewed through the cord. But I would argue that twenty of midnight. That's close enough for me to. That's not close do enough it. for me. Yeah, I'm not feeding him anytime after. What if nine. they have one final <laughs> bite of? Right. What about the final <laughs> bite of chicken that happens at twelve oh one? Is right? everything ruined? He's just not. Or bright. you have something stuck in your teeth, right? <laughs> and then, uh, you know what I did feel bad about? And this is something that I remember really also traumatizing me when I watched the first time. So, it's one thing that Gizmo gets why he multiplies. I think my issue is, and through, and truly through a middle age lens, I still felt this way. Mm -hmm. He has, like, that was my chair. Sure. He has... Like a seizure when he multiplies. It's so disturbing. And crying this and poor, he's, he's obviously in pain. And Corey Feldman and, and Billy just look at him like, oh, what's happening? I like, have help no, this yes. poor animal. Help him. Oh my gosh. Well, did I even write something down? Look, because they don't know. Because he here's ignores, the thing. I wrote, he ignores poor 
Gizmo. The cries. Like, I would be holding him and, like, consoling him. Yes. And, and they just, like, look at him, like, on the table. And it's like, he's remember... Watching. And he's exhausted. He's freaking... He's having a seizure. He's yes. really freaking out. Now, the thing is, again, they... This is where the movie is stupid. Like, they don't know what happens. They just don't get him wet. Right. That's all they know. They don't know anything, yeah. When Gizmo is reacting this way... My instinct as a pet owner is to console this creature. You know he's not going to bite you, but you don't know what's happening. And he's bubbling. He's bubbling. He's bubbling. You think he made him? him. He looks like he's dying. Like, oh he really God. looks like he's something's ha- like wrong. He's screaming. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was terrible. That was terrifying. So, of course, what would you do as a pet owner? The next day, you just bring him to your science teacher and get him a little bit of wet oh again. Oh, my God. I know. Puts a drop of water on just to, to have it happen again. Like, seriously? Yeah. Yeah. Why would you do that to this book? Yeah. At least do it to one of the newer ones. Right. Right. <laughs> right. right. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Wait. Did, was it also Gizmo? He yeah. It? Wasn't it? Oh, or wait. did you bring a second one? <gasps> oh, wait. Because no, he kept him over. Yeah. Oh, no. I think you're right. And they left the other one behind. He left the one behind. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I'm pretty, yeah I was pretty sure. Um, yeah. So I wrote, maybe if it didn't sound like um, Gizmo was being tortured, it'd be more um, interesting. Yes. Um. Billy's not a good pet owner. Not at all. Oh, this is a great line for a PG movie. Yeah, you know, Miss um, <laughs> Miss Positivity Phoebe Cates, she says, Christmas is one of the most depressing times of the year. Well, some are opening presents. Some are opening their wrists. I'm like, yeah. Oh, this is a f- supposed to be a PG family yeah, thing. And I, oh, I will say one thing. So did you ever see Gizmo? Uh, sorry, Gizmo. Gremlins 2? No. Okay. I did see that okay. once. Um, don't remember a lot about yeah. it. It was not well received. Okay. But I will say, so we're talking about her, like her speech about Christmas. Yes. Yeah. So she re, re um she she's in Gris, get, uh, she's in the sequel, and so isn't he? Yeah. I think. Yes. And the one thing I remember about that movie <laughs> is they're having a conversation. Yeah. And I want to say it was about Halloween. Okay. It was about another no. holiday. <laughs> But no, this is oh. the funny, it was actually really oh, okay. funny, yeah. because she starts, it was like making fun of herself, Oh my god! because she starts talking about why she hates this other holiday, Halloween, yeah. and she's saying something, it was like, I almost want to say she, she was like, someone exposed himself to her or something, but it was, it was dealt with in a funny way, oh, okay. and whoever she was talking to, he just kind of like rolls his eyes and like walks away kind of thing, and oh. she's just like... Yeah, that's why I don't like Halloween. But it was a total, like, making fun <laughs> of... It was a spoof of the speech yeah. that she had before. I never I never watched it. I never yeah, saw I'll it. have to look up. Maybe I'll... You know what? Maybe we can post... If I can find that scene, maybe I'll post okay. it on, on Patreon. It sounds really funny. Yeah, it was, I, that's the one thing I remember about the second movie. But she's such a good time. So it's very easy to see why he likes her so much. Because she's, right, she's, she's so much fun. She's super fun. Yeah. Um, okay, worst line reading in this movie... Billy finds the chewed up alarm clock, uh, or, you know, bedroom the clock, cord, yeah. cord, and he looks at his mother and says, Mom, what is going on here? <laughs> and I wrote, clearly he went to the Lydia Cornell School of Acting. <laughs> <laughs> From Too Close for Comfort. You know, she used to always be like, favorite, yeah. but Dad, I don't understand. Like, he, that was his yes. line reading. It was like, Mom, what's going on here? Oh, yeah, my, oh my God. Gosh. Please. Seriously? Terrible. Even I could figure it out. No, okay, yeah. some good stuff. Jesus. They say the word caca a lot. Caca. <laughs> Gizmo. Caca. And then he oh says, gosh. phone home. Caca. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then you go, milk duds. Which, you know me. I uh, love my milk duds. You do. Um, but no, I... He was so, effectively adorable. I... Really, really, really. You mentioned the bar scene. I have, from there on out, from from truly when the gremlins are allowed to mm-hmm. be gremlins and doing their funny, fun shit. Yep. Christian, I think I laughed. It was great. I was laughing, consistently laughing out loud. It was yeah. really good. That is what the that movie should have been. been. Yeah. 100%. Get rid of all of this down, vulgar, violent stuff. Yeah. And stick to the mischievous. Every time I wrote, every time the gremlins laugh, I did too. And me too. <laughs> me too. The laugh's amazing. I did write just like little, there's little details too. Like he holds his nose and he jumps in the swimming pool. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I did think it was awesome. And it's funny because I remember that. 
I kept I kept thinking it was another in, in a different movie when he changes the traffic lights and they both turn green. And you hear the cars oh, crash yes. and people scream. It is so funny. It is really funny. Um, and then the drinking and the drunkenness is great. The shooting at the poker game is hilarious. Oh my gosh, that, the that was ski great. masked thief. Oh, <laughs> all of that is just it's hilarious. It really is hilarious. Yeah, all of that stuff. Um, although I will say jumping into the pool. And all of that happening, terrifying. 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 That is so effective, particularly when I was much younger, when I was 12, when you're just like, oh, this is hopeless. Like, you're feeling, yes. like you're, you feel in that moment. You exactly, like, that is such a great oh, word for it. Right? It's like, this it's is like, hopeless. this is done. They're going to take over yeah. the world. And it gets, and it's um also good. There's a, I think they do, like, dread really well. Because there's also the scene at the end in the store, and there's many scenes where, like, you don't really know where this is going to go. Is no, this movie going to be another? No, you don't know how you're going to be able to survive this. Yeah, and also, you also don't know, it's like, Jesus, how long is this movie going to be? Like when he's on the fountain, for example. Yeah. It's like, you, the movie really, I know, we're, we're saying, I, I'm saying two different things right now, but I mean, I mean both of them. When it is like, horror and mm -hmm. scary it's really effectively scary yeah i just don't think to your point i agree with you it doesn't need to be murderous right because having a million gremlins ruining your life is is hellish enough and then yes. it becomes well do you actually i mean we do that all the time in this world we kill you know we have mouse traps and all kinds of traps for critters that annoy us in our house right. or whatever so what how do you how do you handle these multiplying Potentially right. alien creatures. And you really need to have that that turning point in order for this movie to have a point, really. Yeah. You need to have... So they're all being funny and yeah. mischievous and we're yeah. having a good time, but they, cro they have to cross that line in order for us to be okay with the fact that we're getting rid of them. Like, it has to get to that point where you're like, oh, okay, yeah, no, this isn't really funny and they're really causing a lot of damage now but it has to build to that point it can't start at that point. well but right and in, and what you have too is like stripe like yes. it would be interesting like stripe is just like the one he is the ringleader he, he is, is the one that's like let's be a little more than gremlins right <laughs> And I will tell you, like, he wasn't as scary for me this time. No, same. Right? It same. was like, oh, I was, I remember thinking about him and thinking, oh my God, he He's is really scary. Yeah. Really evil. No. But he wasn't quite as scary. But it had to have made it to that point where now, okay, they're, they're being funny and causing trouble, but now they're, they've got to the point where this is out of hand. Mm-hmm. So we need to put an end to it. If they didn't get to that point, I don't think the audience would have been at the point where we're like, oh, wait, why, why are we killing them? Right. Right? Right. No, it's right. I think, um, I think, and that could have been achieved by the Mrs. Deagle scene. Yes. Yeah, I mean, because like, yep. that's something that's like, it's still murder, but it's like less, you know, whatever. And because I'm telling you, that house scene where they attack the mom in the Christmas tree that does feel like self-defense. It's like, she just murdered three of them. Mm -hmm. The body count, the mother has a bigger, at that point, the mother has the biggest body count in this right, movie. Right. And she looks, could be, potentially be like the one that set them on this dangerous even, path. Does, they tie does, up the Billy dog. doesn't even know that that scientist guy has been killed at this point. No. Well, does he know, he knows that he's it escaped and there was something, but did he know that? He was killed? Well, that's the thing. Even if he knew, the mother didn't. Right. So I don't remember. That, that's really my point. I don't know if... Maybe he does... He did find the dead teacher. But the mom doesn't know that. Right. All he knows is... She, she knows... She just they said, get hatched, out. get out. That's it. But she doesn't. Yeah. So um, I did say something about, about Stripe and some of the other gremlins are so well done. And so... Like, this... This looks great. Yeah. For it 1984, really it holds and 11 up. million. That's like yeah, nothing. nothing. And it looks so good. And it still looks great. And I think, the, but I will say what's funny now with my middle age lens is um, Stripe is so expressive mm -hmm. <laughs> I wrote, that uh, <laughs> the gremlins are often better actors than the humans. Right. Right. Do you feel that? I I'm, not, not, I'm not even yes. being, I'm not even being like, no, so no, smart no, no. I agree. I like, agree. Because their they faces, have, they have more of a character. Like yeah. they're like a three dimensional yeah. character as opposed to the mom. 
Well, even and then Billy. And oh Billy. my god, Billy is so yeah. flat and like and um and it's weird like because the gremlins their faces are so expressive that I was like wow it's like I know what the gremlins are really about and what they're feeling I feel like the human actors are not so strong in this right which is really beside the point point. and I will say there's one thing we're talking about the bar <laughs> compare that scene yeah. in Phoebe Cates's role there yeah. to the kitchen scene and his mom's role there. Yeah. Phoebe Cates' character, I forget her name, I'm sorry. I totally Katie? forget her name. Was it Katie? I don't Did I write know. it down? I didn't write it down. Anyway, I'm yeah. just going to call her Phoebe for now. Okay. Um, th- um, Phoebe was behind the bar. She was clearly upset, but she's pouring the drinks. She's giving them what they need. To t- like, she's not attacking them. That's right. Oh, I mean, and of that, course, it was like 700 against one, but at that point, uh, but still, uh, that is uh, what the mom... But I don't... Yeah. Should have... She, she's not attacking them and trying to kill them all. They're also not trying to kill her. And they're not trying to kill her. They're just They weren't trying stuff. to kill the mom. No. That is the whole fucking point. Exactly. Like, that scene is so bad, I can't get into it anymore. But, but Phoebe <laughs> Cates behaves as I think most would. Yes. Because they don't... She... They haven't really... Done well, and is it that anything. different than a bunch of drunks, drunks anyway? Right, at hundred percent. Christina, they I weren't agree. acting much differently. Thousand percent. Uh, I love the. Oh my god, that bar scene though. It, I mean, it's fantastic. Oh, it's so good, and just how they're all get, they got dressed and they're in costumes. I mean, it's so damn funny. Yeah. It's so damn funny, and uh, I really la- laughed yeah, a lot. I would watch that. I just wrote again. one scene. One thing I wrote is um, <laughs> or human, the humans are just so dumb. But I did think that Phoebe Cates in that bar scene, you're exactly right. She did the right thing. Yes. Absolutely. Um, so should we take a little break? I, my only notes now are about the ending, and I have a lot of trivia and, of course, our questions. Um, I oh, have do, you, do you want to? We can keep let's going. Take, no, let's take a look, you know, because I need to look at my notes. Okay. So, yes, we'll, um, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hey there, it's Brian and Christina, and we have some exciting news. We now have bonus content on Patreon. If you're a fan of old roommates or simply enjoy revisiting pop culture, we would love for you to check out our page at patreon.com slash old roommates. Patrons of old roommates can expect exclusive content such as special episodes, movie recommendations, special videos from us, and bonus content, among other things. Your support will help us to create more content, offset publishing costs, and expand our resources to improve your listening experience. Whether you become a patron or not, we appreciate your support. Drop us a comment on social media, give us a rating or review on your podcast app of choice, or send us a message at oldroommatespod at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for listening. And now, back to the show. Oh, yes. The Gremlins are (laughs) back in our revisit of 1984's the Gremlins. Mm-hmm. Oh no, I'm sorry. Just Gremlins. Just yeah. Gremlins. Sylvester. Um, sorry. Oh my God. Sylvester Stallone. What is Steven, where that coming from? <laughs> Steven Spielberg. Sorry, he's been drinking since nine a.m. Oh my a. God, it is the season. Uh, Steven Spielberg produced it, directed by Joe Dante, written by Chris Columbus, who also wrote The Goonies. But Chris Columbus is much more better known, perhaps, as a director, since he gave us. Adventures in Babysitting, mm-hmm. Home Alone, Mrs. Doubtfire, yep. Stepmom, among other movies, and a, a couple of the Harry Potter movies. Christina. Yeah, I think the first couple. Potter. I think yeah. the first two. So, Chris Columbus, go. Um, yeah. Um, Christina, what? So you reviewed so, your notes. Yeah, I have a couple of notes yeah. to say. So um, I thought of just an observation, a middle-aged lens observation. They're drinking. The police officers are drinking in the police station. Oh yeah, yeah. Like um, that's I let very that, responsible. I know. I let that slide because it's the holidays. Oh okay. I'll have to remember <laughs> that <laughs> when I'm about to commit a crime. <laughs> I'll just assume all the police officers are drinking. It's a sleepy little town. Yes, it is a sleepy little town. Um, I I have a note about the music. You just play oh, that yeah. music. This so, and I think this is part of where I had like this like 
just a tweak yeah. here and there. Yeah. And is it supposed to be funny or not? Like the, all this stuff. The the car destroying the house clip. Yeah. yeah. The music was very chipper. Mm -hmm. And it made me feel like I'm supposed to be thinking this is funny. Yeah. But it wasn't to me. And maybe that's a middle-aged lens too. I agree. I think it's because I think it, it's the point of view. It's when you do that with the music, it's like then the point of view is the gremlins. So like, oh, we're supposed to be yes. enjoying the gremlins hijinks through their eyes in a way. Right. But it's, I agree. But it's, it's not weird. funny. It's, it's so like, weird. I don't want to be. The murderer. The murderer. Exactly. Yeah. Like you were saying in Friday That's the 13th, right. right? It's the same type of thing. And they do I that I don't want to be the murderer. Movie. Yeah. Uh, the other a, part, wait, really quick, because you're exactly right. Because yes. it is. It's like that point of view, the camera work is from the tractor, mm -hmm. which is the gremlin driving. And yeah, it's it's very awkward. It's a very yeah. strange setup. Yeah. And that poor wife. She didn't do anything wrong. I, I know. Well, yeah, I know. Exactly. There's a mailbox scene where it, it starts funny mm -hmm. because he's mailing the mailbox, yeah. uh, mailing the letters, rather, mm -hmm. and they get spit back out. Yeah. And then he's doing it again, and then it turns violent again, yeah. where this hand grabs it and pulls it and murders the guy. Yeah. Yeah. Again, like, starts funny, ends violent. And I wrote down, it's the ultimate high-low game. Remember mm -hmm. we used to do this, like, yeah. high-low, like, it was just sort of a funny thing where you say, oh, da, 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 and then <laughs> it's like, yeah, like, you get it, you get it. Um, but I agree, yeah. Yes, and... The movie theater scene. Yeah. I also, I liked it, but how did it end? I forget how it ended. It was like, did it end violent? Well, they, they were gas, just being they crazy. They were gassing the, um, the, yeah, well, because, so the gremlins were enjoying themselves watching a movie. Yes. They took this opportunity. I think it was the right choice, too. They were going to, what I thought they were going to do is just gas them to sleep. Yeah. Like, just gas them out, right? Right, 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 right. But right. no. <laughs> they decided to blow up the entire movie theater. Right. Okay, that's and it gets the, a yeah. little weird. So it happens at one point, um, the what the movie ends or something happens, and they can see them running behind the screen, and all the gremlins. And that's a great moment yes, where that's all a the good hopping visual. animated gremlins are slashing through the screen. And then, uh, but they are able to trap the gremlins, and they the thing does blow up and kill, ki seemingly killing all of the gremlins except right. Stripe. Yes. Yeah. Um, I always keep, I keep writing Spike, but it was I know, he's such a Spike. Yeah, it should have been, yeah. That, so, and then there was a moment where he kisses her. And I wrote, I can't remember what it was. I don't know why my memory is bad. I wrote, this is the moment to kiss her? It was clearly in the middle of all this violence. Yeah. Because it was right before death, the death of Stripe. Yeah. But, again, like, weird. Like, did he even have to kiss her? No. Like, maybe at the very end, when he's, they're all through with all this stuff, then kiss her, maybe. But it they was before have, Stripe Yeah, they killed. have... Uh, they, I, I, they, well, that, here's what's funny, because I wrote the destruction of Stripe, of Stripe is gross. My note yeah, I wrote is, this is very My note yeah. before that is humans are just so dumb. So I'm thinking, I wrote that when they kissed. Maybe that's, yeah. yeah. Their timing couldn't be worse. It's terrible. It, the timing was bad for her Santa Claus story. Mm -hmm. The timing is bad for this kiss. I just don't know why they felt it necessary. Why couldn't this whole thing have been a bonding moment? Mm -hmm. Like, they didn't have to, like, like discover love in the middle of terror. It's well, and weird. He, here's another um, <laughs> unnecessary part. Judge Reinhold. Yeah. He shows up at the beginning of the movie because he's supposed to be successful. And he's a jerk. He's a jerk. Yeah. He asks her out. She says, no. Does he come back? No. That's it. I, there's got to be, there's gotta be some cares? cut there's scenes. There's got to be. Cut scenes where he dies. There's no reason yeah. why he's even in there. Yeah. And I like him. It was a nice seeing him. I like him. And it was funny because they're both... He and Phoebe are both in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Oh, cute. I forgot. So I yeah. sort of got that I've never reunion. Seen, I've never seen the whole but movie. But yeah. it was like, okay, now and now he's gone. Yeah. So there's no, like... It's just mostly Billy being like, you have to grow up, kid. Like, you have to, like, you know, I don't know. It's whatever. But anybody could have said strong, that. Not feeling strong. Not being need... strong enough. Because Billy is a bit of a wimp. Um, and I'm not sure there was ever any resolution. Like, I didn't no. feel like he grew anything. I, I mean... Grew or anything. Yeah. Or grew anything. But I don't feel like he grew as a person. Like no. Billy I'm talking about. There was no resolution to that whole thing. There's got to be some some um, footage that we're just not seeing. 
I believe that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I do think so. Not only that, but I know there's a there is like the original script is much darker. So. I know there's, I think the mother actually, they actually killed the mother oh, okay. in the original script and they decided not to do that. So, so. It was, I'm wondering if it was a, an R, like I wonder if he, they had this original cut and they brought it to the, you know, ratings board yeah. and they were going to give it an R Yeah. and they cut out a couple of scenes so they made it a PG well, it be, and that's why it perhaps. had such a problem. Yeah. The things that don't really make too much sense sometimes. I think, I will say, the, the mother dying, though, is a script thing. Not a, they never shot that. Oh, but, um, okay. But to your point, yeah, Judge Reinald, for him to appear like that, and even the other banker guy, it seemed like there was more to that story that's yeah. never never met with. I will say, when we is it okay to get to the end or Oh, no? absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so I don't the, really have anything else except for the fact that I'm just saying that, that Stripe was a very gruesome death, and I felt it was very anticlimactic. For some reason. Well, I, I think I respectfully disagree. Uh, although I know what you mean in the sense of like, here's my note, is that I wrote, I've never had such little faith in a hero <laughs> than, when, <laughs> than when Billy goes after Stripe. And I wrote, oh, Lord. I would have felt like, more comfortable with Phoebe going after him. thousand percent. Billy has shown us nothing that he ever has sound judgment. Mm -hmm. That he's not. That he's even strong. I have I, like this is like really he's our he's the hero in this. Mm -hmm. um, even though I remember that he was, but that scene though, and I think, and I know what you mean about like anticlimactic in the sense of Billy at one point slips and falls. Big surprise. And Stripe <laughs> throws like fucking. Uh, blades, those round. Yes. What do you oh call them? Oh my gosh! Like Christina, um, the, um, Chinese stuff. No, no, no. no they were like stars. blades to a. No, they weren't. They were big. They were like the blades to a um, to a, ch a chainsaw or something. Oh, what do you call, right, uh, right, the right. sand. What do you call those? I was thinking they were like the Chinese buzz stars, saws? but they're not. Are they buzz saws? What are they called? Chainsaws. Well, it's chainsaw, but the, he's throwing the actual blade blades. of the thing. It's insane, and they stick in the wall. And then he has, then he brings the chainsaw. Right, And right, Billy right. has a baseball bat and he's blocking. That is scary as shit. That is very scary. You have that scary ass gremlin trying to jam a chainsaw in your face and all it's protecting you is a wooden bat. And then. Again, probably self defense on stripes. Ah! Uh, <laughs> and then Gizmo in the Barbie dream car is so oh, damn cute. Oh, God. Gizmo, Gizmo was amazing. Gizmo's a great movie character. Yeah. He really is. He jumps in when he's needed. He's always one step ahead. He's pretty bright. He doesn't talk much. He's a good singer. He's very cute. Um, he's very cute. And he just wants a peaceful life. And he he's, wants everything and to... he's funny. Back. And he's resilient. He's resilient. He... And he's, he is action... He's like, don't... He's just trying to live his life and yeah. play by the rules. And then he has these dumb humans making all these dumb decisions all around him. Yes. I'm wondering why they felt like they got them all. If it was you and I <laughs> trying to tackle all of these gremlins, right? And you blow up the movie theater, yeah. and then you get now, and then you see Stripe is somewhere else. Wouldn't you think, oh my God, are there more? So here's my thought on that. Um, I think because they identified Stripe as the leader, it made them feel a lot comfortable, and because they blew up. Hundreds yeah. of gremlins in the movie theater. They felt comfortable. I do. My point is, um, they felt awfully comfortable blowing up the movie theater. Oh like, yeah, I was like, yeah. Really? You fucking blew up. A and is there going to be any evidence of these gremlins? Like, who else has seen the gremlins? Well, the mother has dead dead carcasses all in her kitchen. Oh, that's true. That's yeah. true. That's true. Okay. Um, but yeah, but cre yeah. So, uh, destruction of stripe was really gross and. But then, and here's my middle, here's my, my, my now and then, I forgot about the true ending. Like, I thought the ending was Stripe dying and the sun coming up, mm -hmm. and that's that. But um, I loved that the man came back and oh, took Gizmo back. Me right? too. Me too. I'm so, that was 100% the right ending. I'm that so feels glad very, that, that kid did not, he obviously is not responsible enough. That feels very... Modern, yes, right. It's yes. like, well, no, you you show that you can't be trusted, and we're well, taking and it back. He stole him to begin with. I mean, essentially, the I guy, mean, I get yeah. the the kid, you know, sold it. Yeah, whatever. But but yeah, he didn't even want to get this. He said no to begin with. The yeah. old old Chinese man. Uh, do you smell that, by the way? 
No? It's uh, the cat used the litter box down the hall. He oh. has, yeah, he's, he has quite, the litter quite, box shame. quite the movement. So, <laughs> so, um, so um, any um, other, so what do you think? Did you like it better? Or well, here's the thing, you know, I just want to say, so the, the old man oh, says, you do to Mugwai what society has done to all of nature's gifts. Mm. And I was like, wow, this is timely. Yes. And I do love they took Gizmo back, 100%. Um, and I love that last shot of the guy walking down the snowy street. And I do love the end where it's like, turn on all the lights. You may have a gremlin. Mm -hmm. Dun, 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 dun. Although Carl was watching it with me and he's like, this music's annoying. Oh, the, <laughs> yeah. It was very At the it end, is. it wouldn't stop. Dun, 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 Jerry Goldsmith, yeah. by the way, who we just talked about with The Omen. He's been nominated. He was nominated 16 Oscars. He won for The Omen. Nice. Um Howie Mandel is the voice of Gizmo, as we know. That's right. Oh, and Corey Feldman was in it. Corey Feldman was in it. Well, he's the one that spilled the water. That's right. Um, Gremlins, of course, inspired Critters and Ghoulies and Troll and Hobgoblins and Mun the Munchies, all these 80s knockoff movies. Um, so now getting back to your question, I think I liked it more. Yeah. And I just wrote, because there are parts where, as an adult, I laughed more mm -hmm. than when I was a kid. Yeah. Because like, when I was a kid, I was still like, Oh, there, this is weird. It's like, I don't really know what the tone is. And as an adult, I laughed a lot more. So I think slightly more. I think I liked it more too. Yeah. I actually, I liked it before, but it wasn't, it, it, you have like that, that, um, PSD. PTSD. Right? PTSD. Yeah. PTSD. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Going into it thinking, oh my gosh, this was a really scary movie. And so the fact that it wasn't super duper scary it was a lot, like, it was still as violent, but I I was able to enjoy it more. And I did laugh a lot more, mm -hmm. and I, I appreciated it more with my little mental tweaks. I, I agree with your tweaks. The, yeah. Again, I think the only thing I disagree with, I think the ending was climactic, but it was, it was very... It was lower than the chainsaw baseball bat stuff, mm -hmm. right? Because that yes. sort of feels like, oh, shit, no, no, this no, no. is... Oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. I don't oh. mean the ending with the guy walking away from the... No, 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 that was... No, you mean the, the fountain. I mean the fountain. Yeah, yeah and yeah, I yeah. knew what you meant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, so, what, are you about, what about questions? Oh, I have, I, have, a, I have a question. Do you have a match game? I have a match game. I have a match game. <gasps> Do you want to go first? I'll go first. Okay. Oh, this is so exciting. Um, <laughs> okay, Christina. Well... I think we're about to get another Mugwai infestation. Oh, no. Yeah. Gizmo just booked a vacation to blank. God. I think we're about to get another Mugwai infestation. Gizmo just booked a vacation to blank. Christina's really struggling. I know. Well, it's a little see, bit. You just see her face. It's priceless. <laughs> okay. Ah, I, I, this is kind of silly. But okay. Ding. Ding. Sorry. All right, Christina. Gizmo, we're in trouble with a mug wine fist. Gizmo just booked a vacation to blank. The aquarium. Oh! Okay, so you went local, like very localized. Yeah, well, I was going to do like a, a cruise or yeah. something like that, but I'm like, or an island. Yep, so that's where my, my yeah. was going. So I actually had Hawaii when I wrote the oh, question, but sure, I changed yeah. it to Seattle because it rains in oh, Seattle. Oh, good. That would have been, so, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, that was good, though. Good. The yeah, aquarium's the, good. The aquarium. All right, so my... <laughs> yes. Let's see. What did I do with that? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, So here's my match game question. Exciting. Get the, get the music ready. Yeah, it's ready. All right, so what they didn't tell you in Gremlins is this actually a fourth rule? Oh, no. When owning a Gremlin? And this might have been in the R-rated version. Oh, no. Perhaps. Okay. Maybe they just cut it. But the, there's a fourth rule. But it's Gremlins... They they can't get wet. You can't yeah. feed them after midnight. Bright lights. Bright lights. The boy bright lights. And they also can't have sex. Oh. If they do, they blank.
that they cannot have sex. Ding. Okay. So, gremlins, there's the fourth rule. They can't have sex. If they do, they... Explode. Oh, my God, Brian! Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Okay. So, here's the thing. Okay. I... When I wrote this question, yeah. this is the same exact thing that just uh, happened. Oh, my God. When I wrote the question, I wrote explode. Yeah. But now I was th rethinking it. I yeah. shouldn't have rethought it. Okay. I wrote down, they scream uncontrollably. <laughs> That's good, too. I was trying to think of like a sexual thing. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. So that was Gremlins. fun. This was Gremlins. And this week we have um uh, what do uh, we have on Oh Patreons? my lord, what are we doing? We're we already well we already did it. We it's did the, it, yeah. Um, I'm trying, trying to remember what, we what we're doing. One moment. We Oh we opened it up. Oh my god, of course. Oh my god, of course. Christina and I we both got each other uh, Christmas presents, That's and right. we're sharing them on Patreon. Yep, and you'll have to let us know which gift you thought was better. Oh, no. Okay. No. Well, ah! but, but anyway, ah! yeah, so check it out. It's, you know, it's fun. It's fun. And thank you for listening. That was Gremlins. And that's it for us in this episode of Old Roommates. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to Old Roommates on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And please give us a rating or review while you're there. And if you're interested in more Old Roommates, including special episodes, bonus content, movie recommendations, and more, visit our Patreon page at patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash old roommates. Comments and ideas can be emailed to us at oldroommatespod at gmail.com. And don't forget to follow us on social media at Old Roommates. Thanks again for listening. This is Christina. And this is Brian. Until next time.